started. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you, everyone. Uh, this is obviously the February Cloud Foundry um, CAB meeting. So I am not Troy Topnick. Uh, Troy Topnick is your new host, taking over from Dr. Max, who uh, served as well for the last, I think, three years. Um, Troy, unfortunately, is running a bit late today, so he asked me to kick things off. Hopefully, I'll join and uh, we can uh, we can kind of formally welcome him. So I guess we've got the usual updates on the agenda. So we'll get the sort of CFF highlights, uh, PMC project highlights, and then we have uh, hopefully a couple of uh, community projects that we can uh, we can hear from the guys and 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 uh, people there see what's going on um so let's start so wanna maybe you could give us a, an update on what's happening galactically in cff sure i think the biggest update is um definitely the cloud foundry summits i know the um i hope you all know that, it, that these are co-located with open source summits now um at least for this year in austin for north america and dublin ireland for the european events the call for papers for open source summit closed last weekend but our um, our call for papers is still open um i think i'm looking at the agenda again um the call for papers i think closes sometime in march i will put in the exact date here um we did have a call for uh co-chairs as always we we're looking for nominations for uh, co-chairs. I've received so um, so far only a handful of nominations. I could proceed with that, but I would like to keep that open for one more day. They were supposed to close last night, but I will keep this keep this open for um, one more day so that folks can maybe have uh, the, their last minute nominations sending in for uh, the co-chair nominations. Um, the only difference with co-chairs this time is that we will not just be asking the co-chairs to look at the submissions and help us um, rate the sessions or um, set up the sessions, but we will also be looking for their um, advice or guidance as to what the format should be, because we only have two tracks, uh, the um, developers, track and the contributor track so instead of having seven different tracks for a single day event we reduced it to just two tracks so to answer your question tyler um it would be just for two tracks the uh, developers track and the contributors track um and we are looking for the coaches guidance on structuring the day or the format as well. What would be the best given the submissions or given the single day event format, what would be the best, would it be a good idea to have session after session after session the way you, we usually have with the breakout talks or will it be good to have a round table discussion or a retro kind of a discussion and then move into sessions. So we would look for the co-chairs to give us that kind of a guidance, mainly because this time we also will not be having keynotes, at least as of now, we will, we are not planning on having a keynote stage, given it's a single day event, we did not want to take away much time from the breakout talks or from this um, rest of the discussions that would be more useful for the community. So at least for now, tentatively, we are not planning on keynotes. Um, so we would be looking for the co-chairs as guidance on uh, setting the structure for the rest of the day as well. So it's a little more important, as I mentioned in the blog post, than it has always been. Um, I mean, it has always been important, but this time it's a little more important because you all will be structuring the day as well, the flow of the day as well. Um, so with that, I will update all of the links in the meeting notes and I will pass it back to Neil, unless anyone has questions. Okay, well, um, if anyone has questions, I'm here through the rest of the call as well. You can either send me a private message here or um, ask a question on chat or on Slack or email. Thanks so much. Thank you, Swana. Okay, great. So let's move on PMC project highlights. So this is where we hear from each of the PMCs. I think first up is the runtime PMC. I think I see Eric. Hey, Neil. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, happy to give a quick overview of some of the highlights um, over the past month or so. Um, as others have mentioned, uh, the kubectf incubation proposal is out on the mailing list. And uh, if you have any comments or questions on it, now is really your last chance because the PMC is going to consider it uh, over the next few days. Um, so looking forward to, to getting that in. 
And uh, across the existing project teams, uh, there's been a lot of activity primarily around um, running CF on Kates. So the Relent team has been progressing uh, with their efforts to get the CF for Kates um, integration project up and running. Uh, I know that there are some component teams that have been uh, getting their components up to their latest stable um, templates and configuration as part of that. Um, as one example, CAPI is uh, progressing on both their work to provide uh, Kate's packaging and deployment artifacts for the cloud controller components, uh, as well as their integration with uh, the KPAC machinery to run build pack staging tasks using cloud native build packs. So I think they're very close to having uh, full CF push workflow working end to end. So that's very exciting. Uh, Loggregator is also moving forward on integrating their new architecture into the CF for Kate's um, integration framework. That's all based on Fluentd for the log collection and they're standardizing up to slog for transport or cross components. And then uh, also networking, uh, they've had um, their Istio based ingress integrated into that for a while and they've been doing more now to take more advantage of the Istio sidecars to provide TLS between system components. And uh, that's, I think, wrapping up. Um, so they are now also starting to focus on more configuration for certificate management. So actually being able to configure certificates on the ingress gateway um, for TLS termination and um, doing other management of certificates inside of the uh, system component coordination. Uh, UAA also, they're continuing to progress on their kids deployable artifact, which I think is fairly generic and uh, likely to have applications outside of just the CF uh, integration responsibilities. Um, also volume services, uh, they have been working on getting their existing support for shared SMB volumes for app containers um, into uh, CF for Kates. I think things that they've been doing have been targeting both the uh, Relent project and kubectl. Uh, so I think they're wrapping that up and they're starting to look um, more deliberately, deliberately at expanding the support for their volume uh, attachments to things like single attached storage. And then um, just uh, more on an administrative note, uh, the Diego team, uh, they've decided to try out just using GitHub for any kind of um, story tracking and issue intake. Uh, so they've, I think at this point, cleared out their tracker project and they're just focusing on GitHub as a more community accessible resource. So giving that a bit of an experiment. I see we have a Jules here. Any updates from Irene or Garden? Which Jules? Like, uh, an embarrassment Jules of Jules. Jules's. <laughs> I think that's the, the collective noun is embarrassment, an embarrassment of Jules's. Uh, <laughs> let's not make that a thing. Uh, we, we shipped a, a, a little minor release of Irini today. Um, get it while it's hot. Um, we are uh, very close now to, so we're calling it the 1.1 milestone, even though we ship 1.3 today, because um, we do love to confuse people. Um, but 1.1 is sort of like the things that we kind of pushed over 1.0 to ship 1.0 last year, but kind of the polishes. Um, we're very close to that. And then we will start on V3 as our next big thing, just completing the V3 features. Cool. Like tasks and rolling deploys or you're not trying to tackle like isolation segments or anything, right? Not isolation segments. Although, I mean, well, that's a whole other thing, but you have lots of nice new options via Kubernetes for some of those things. But yeah, more, more the user facing side of things, things that users might expect to work, like, as you say, like tasks, rolling deployments, rollbacks, that kind of thing. Very good. You've done, Eric, is that everything? Yeah, I think, I think that's a good list. Perfect, thank you very much. Okay, next up, Bosch PMC. Do we have anyone, I'm just looking through participants. I've got Marco and Morgan. I don't know if we have anyone from the Bosch team that can give an update. 
if there is no one from the Bosch team, there is also a Bosch PMC call, if I'm not wrong, tomorrow um, at the same time. So you all can also join and either, yes, it is, a, it is at the same time tomorrow. Um, where, where can people find details on, on that? Call? It's on the community calendar. Good point, Wayne. I will post the link here and also in the meeting notes. Thank you, Swana. And I think we're going to get the same for extensions because obviously Dr. Max isn't here. I'm not sure if we have anyone else who can speak to extensions. Uh, okay. They're going to get an extension on, on having to talk about it. So I know they have a, um, I think they have their meeting on this coming Monday. So look in the calendar as well for that one and join if you're interested. All right. Wow. That was a quick whiz through PMC highlights. So I guess this is the, the always the interesting bit. Not that the last bit wasn't interesting. Uh, it's where we get to hear from people in the community. So I guess first up, uh, we have um, CF smoke tests. Ono, do you want to take it away? Sound check, one, two, three. <laughs> Seems Perfect. to be okay. Yes, thank you. Let me see if I can share my screen. It's the first time I'm sharing using, let me see, uh, it says like this. Is that showing up my presentation? Absolutely. Oh, yep. yep. Okay. Just checking because uh, normally I would do this from my laptop, but uh, I have been banned to the attic. So now I'm sitting with my regular PC and I just had to install the Zoom and everything. But if it's all working, then yeah, well, it's, it's actually not, yeah, I don't know really what's the definition of a community project. Um, basically, I asked uh, Swarna, like, how can we uh, make things available in the best way? And she suggested joining this call. Uh, so basically, uh, it's about, yeah, smoke tests. Um, basically, uh, at this moment, we, we, we have a, a, what we call the cloud native application platform. Uh, yeah, well, we are relatively small compared to the big guns, uh, of course, like SUSE and others but we are a government organization and basically we have to cope with our own uh, situation. We run it all on, on premise. We don't run in a public cloud. It's not yet allowed for government regulation. The, my internet connection is unstable. Is it still visible? Oh, sorry. Yep. It I cut back up. Okay. It was it was a little slow for a bit, but it seems like yeah. it cut back up. Yeah, okay, thank you. Because I'm the reason I moved to the attic because here I have a wired connection. Wireless I thought is too much of a risk. And so especially because I'm up upstreaming this. But anyways, uh we have five cloud foundry and since last year we also have Kubernetes array. Uh and yeah, we have to monitor both of them. Well, Prometheus Carvana, I guess everybody already knows about that. Uh, we send alerts to Slack nowadays. Uh, well, the common problems, uh, if you start turning on alerts, you get uh, uh, quite a lot of them. Uh, but we were missing one big thing. Um, I mean, you can look at numbers, but if uh, people start calling because uh, applications don't work, at least that's the perception. We needed to have some quick way to see if it's the platform which is not working or just one of the hundreds of applications on the platform. We didn't really have a, a standard solution for this. So we asked our partner to, to build a, a smoke test for a Cloud Foundry. And later on, we also added one for Kubernetes. Basically, it checks if the platform is operating, uh, if anything, fails, we will get an alert on the Slack channel. Yeah, and uh, we also have a nice dashboard we can share with the service desk and also our uh, developers can also uh, check out the dashboard. It's just an application running on the platform itself, which uh, shows if everything is uh, green, more or less. And then if uh, it's all green, an application dies because that's what happened, happened, happened often in the past. Uh, an application is stopped responding and the platform gets blamed. And yeah, we needed to quickly uh, point out where the problem is. So, well, okay, well this I can skip. I guess this is just a, like a customized dashboard. 
I don't know uh, if anybody online has experience with Bosch director monitoring. That's one thing we were missing uh, when we started out with Prometheus and Gravana for monitoring Cloud Foundry. All the Bosch VMs were monitored, except for uh, Bosch director itself. I mean, uh, when we had a problem with Bosch, we were not even aware of the problem until we realized we could no longer manage the Bosch VMs. So we added, uh, I don't know if you see this, is that readable here, the Bosch director is probably too small. Is the text readable for the screen for the people? Because I don't know how it shows up in the in the recording. It, it's it's legible. Yeah. There was like a little Sounds delay in your in your sound. Oh, okay, well, okay, yeah, but okay. It's, Sorry about it's that. It's better. Okay, uh, now. Okay. Uh, here we have a screenshot of our smoke test pipeline. I was not sure if I could show this live, so I made some screenshots because, yeah, it all depends on the network connection, I guess. Uh, basically, it runs uh, every five minutes. It pushes an app, and the app itself will check if it can uh, connect to all its bound services and execute some basic tests. For example, for a database, it creates a table, inserts a record, tries to read it again, drops the table, and uh, yeah, basically this cycle repeats. And then they have a dashboard, which uh, looks kind of like this, where we can see on the big screen in our operations room, all our environments, uh, if everything is okay. If it's okay, it's green. If it's failing for whatever reason, it will be red. And then we can check it out. Well, of course, Cloud Foundry is not an isolated part. That's also one of our challenges. I'm really curious how other people deal with it. We have uh, integration with DNS, storage, external databases, um, uh, ADFS, uh, and other components, and yeah because the platform depends on or certificates get expired, then the platform also stops working. So yeah, we, we needed to get a clear picture where we are and how we can monitor everything. Well, this is, I guess, obvious. This I already mentioned, uh, we had no monitoring on Bosch. So the repo, which is mentioned at the end, also contains a Bosch exporter. But if somebody now is going to tell us there is a standard solution, I'd love to hear about it because this is a custom built uh, Bosch exporter to monitor Bosch itself. And this is still we need to work on. We don't have this yet in place. And well, I can. This is something also which uh, caused problems in the past when there was an upload of uh, software. Then suddenly Bosch started updating. Uh, deployments when they were actually in use. And this is maybe also common uh, to other people who are actually pushing uh, code to the platform. If you did a build back up restaging because uh, more. Let me see. Well, the main reason we have the smoke test, basically, well, we can try to prevent uh, things from becoming really a problem. That's why we initiated this project in the first place. We did run into some issues, so we would very much like to hear from other people how they, man uh, how they manage smoke testing their platform, if they do. Because uh, in both cases, we either have uh, the Bosch director filling up storage when we run uh, Bosch errand smoke tests like we do for Kubernetes. And in the Cloud Foundry case, the build back cache was filling up because we were repeatedly pushing the same app.
Well, these are the things we are still working on. We want to keep track of uh, availability of the platform, somehow some kind of nice figure for upper management to determine how much uptime we actually have. And I'm not sure if this is an issue. This is something which worries a bit because we do often build back upgrades are okay. So we would like very much feedback on this point. And also, yeah, last but not least, uh, any feedback uh, would be very much welcome uh, because I'm sure we are not the only ones facing problems like we did. And uh, well, these are, uh, if people are interested in checking uh, the code we are actually using in the platform, well, slightly modified version, our partner made it available on uh, GitHub. So if people would like to uh, check things out, they are available there. Yeah, that's it uh, for my part. Uh, I, I can show some, some live uh, stuff, but that is not really uh, showing a lot just like it's passing or failing, but is the sound still working? So I pass back a uh, presentation to the presenters, the others. Any questions? Are we on the right track? <laughs> because we got the feeling we are basically like reinventing the wheel somehow when we started out this. Well, that's just the surface of it. I am very curious. We've we've solved similar things with people in the past as well. And uh, the, we have a project on GitHub called Lighthouse. It might be worth kind of comparing notes at some point. Okay, that, uh, definitely I should check it out. Because yeah, we found very little feedback. We did notice that whenever we were, uh, I, I did a, uh, I said a presentation on, uh, on the CF Summit twice that doesn't really make me experienced but i did notice that whenever we were talking about the smoke test then people were like hey we need something like this and that triggered me like maybe we should make this publicly available in some form and yeah all right thank you no more questions for Arno? Awesome. Okay, cool. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, so I think we're hearing from Savani. Is that right? From T-Mobile on the same subject? Hey, hi. This is hey. Savani. And yep, we will also be presenting on smoke test. And our senior engineer, Piyush, is on the call. And if he can, he can the presenter. He'll be uh, presenting today. And then we also have Ali, who also worked on the smoke test. Uh, joining today, but uh, Piyush will be the one to talk about the scale at which we run at T-Mobile and um, how smoke tests have really helped us. Perfect, thank you. Take it away. Hi everyone. Is my um, desktop yes. visible? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so good morning everyone. Um, I'm Piyush from T-Mobile Platform Engineering Team. Um, work, work with Savni and Ali. Um, and this is my first time in this forum. So thank you for having us um, and let us share our work. Um, pretty excited to share this with everyone. Uh, just a quick note, uh, great presentation, Ono. Um, definitely, I would like to say that you're on the right path. Uh, we are trying to do similar stuff, uh, just in a different context at a different scale. Um, and definitely, uh, I'll touch base on some of the things that uh, Ono has uh, already set the context for. Um, and before I move on, uh, with the presentation, um, although everyone is aware of um, what smoke tests are and what are they used for, I like to give an analogy for uh, the whole um, drive to initiate this uh, effort. Um, although we have uh, open source um, smoke tests available, um, 
so what was the need for us to sort of build these from scratch? Um, well, um, the simplest analogy I, I can think of is um, monitoring uh, the health and performance of a car. Uh, let's say, for example, if you want to make sure that your car is working uh, fine, one thing is to monitor all the metrics, whether your speedometer is working fine, whether your brakes are working fine and things like that. But the other approach is to see um, whether all those components can work together. And that's what uh, the drive is for us to um, build these smoke tests. We want to test the workflows, not individual health of um, the, metric, the critical components of Cloud Foundry, uh, but overall um, health as to verify that those components are working well together. So that's our drive uh, to build these smoke tests. Um, we are the platform engineering team. Uh, we operate both platforms, um, Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes. Um, the, the scale is pretty large. At T-Mobile, we are trying almost 80,000 plus application instances on um, Cloud Foundry and 15,000 plus bots on uh, Kubernetes across two data centers, three regions, and so on. Um, pretty much every team that um, builds application within T-Mobile uh, uses either of these two platforms. And uh, given the inception of Cloud Foundry within our uh, team, uh, the, the adoption has grown tremendously high. And obviously, Cloud Foundry is our um, uh, more, more used platform, I would like to say. And um, that basically puts us in a position that you know monitoring is mission critical for us. We can't um, let uh, events go without being noticed. So um, we need to really be on top of things, not just as far as um, the health of critical components, but also making sure that you know those components are working together as far as workflows are concerned, because. Our application developers go through those workflows every single day, and we need to make sure that those workflows are healthy in healthy state. Um, so we obviously we decided with the open source um, smoke test, um, but there were some gaps that we found, and those were causing some issues. Um, to begin with, there were some upstream changes that you know, our pipelines were pulling, and the pipelines would break if, if something, uh, for example, recently um, one app got deleted from the uh, public GitHub repo and our pipeline, one of our pipeline started breaking. Uh, so those kind of things uh, so, sort of um, put us in a bad spot where we were relying on something open source, but if something changes and we are constantly using it, um, those changes could cause problems for us. Then um, there were a few tests that you know uh, were using um, tremendous amount of resources on every single run of those uh, tests, and um, because of the lack of uh, post completion cleanups, um, we were wasting a ton of resources. Uh, at some point, when we tried to clean up our foundations, which were like 15 or so. At that point of time, we had 6,000 plus spaces, apps, service instances, uh, orgs, quotas, and so on, uh, occupying all these memory. So um, that, again, um, triggered a red uh, alarm for us. And we needed to go ahead and clean up all those resources manually and through automation and so on. Um, there were some operations like if you want to test how's your MySQL um, service broker is doing, um, you don't want to go straight right from creating orbs and spaces and so on because those operations don't really tell you anything about MySQL service broker. So uh, there were some un unnecessary operations going on with those smoke tests and then uh, because you're doing all these operations, um, you obviously need higher privileges to uh, run all these operations, which was also causing a security risk for us. And then at the end, there was no, um, 
not uh, so the level of um, granularity for uh, reporting the results of these smoke tests was also not adequate for us. We wanted to make sure that we know how many times uh, a particular operation is failing so that we can tackle those events uh, in a much more focused way and so on. So um, with all these, um, we thought that let's uh, try to solve this problem uh, from the beginning, right? So we decided to go, go ahead and uh, try a customized uh, suite for smoke test uh, for all the major components that we were interested in. And the, the goal was to have a solution that's reliable, meaning um, if a smoke test fails, we want to know, or we want to be very sure that um, there's a problem with the platform, rather not the problem with the smoke test itself. So we want to make it, we wanted to make it as reliable as possible. Also plug and play, play uh, because you know, uh, as we are growing our platforms and we are offering new services to our application developers, uh, we want to make sure that we are uh, not wasting too much time uh, writing new tests uh, from scratch and it will take uh, a significant amount of time. So we wanted to add new found to be able to add new foundation and uh, add new tests as quickly as possible. Um, again, new foundation onboarding should be um, easy enough for us to, uh, you know, because um, for last one year we have grown from 10 to almost 25 foundations at this point. Um, and we are constantly increasing the number of foundations. So we wanted to make sure that our uh, framework should be easy enough to allow us to add new foundations uh, fairly quickly. And then uh, not just adding new foundation, but also deploying the pipeline or the uh, smoke test on the newer foundation as quickly as possible through all sorts of automation. And then um, we wanted to make sure that every smoke test job um, is customized in the sense that how much execution time uh, it takes. So we wanted to make sure that we are running each and individual uh, smoke test with a customized frequency on every single uh, foundation. And then um, some level of Bosch uh, level cleanup uh, because Sometimes when the service brokers time out, you need to go at the Bosch level and uh, clean up those resources. So wanted to make sure that these are um, taken into account. Um, we wanted to make sure that we have enough granular metrics so that we can build heuristics on top of them. And um, last but not the least, it should be workflow oriented. So the goal is to test the workflow, but not necessarily uh, you know, uh, test individual components because we have metrics for them. Uh, and we know uh, when the metrics um, behave differently, we know um, that, you know, certain components are not behaving properly. But uh, for, for the smoke test, the purpose is really to test the workflows. So what exactly do we test right now? Um, we test mostly uh, those services that we are offering to our application developers. Um, and PaaS, obviously the core functionality of the platform needs to be tested. Then Autoscaler is one of the most uh, utilized service um, among our application developers. We offer MySQL, Redis, RabbitMQ, Cloud Cache, uh, all the Spring Cloud services. And then we have our own monitoring tools, uh, metadata tools that we need to be on, uh, on top of in terms of their health. And then uh, are we are our applications able to send logs uh, to Splunk, which is our logging and monitoring uh, platform? And um, and then we started um, testing the basic Kubernetes services as well. Uh, going forward, we have more um, involved plans to test Bosch uh, objects, releases, you know, deployments and such. Um, load balancer, blob stores, um, and then at the end, because our platforms are growing, uh, the number of services we offer is growing, 
um, we definitely want to make sure that every alert that's actionable, um, we want to build uh, automation around taking steps in a much uh, educated and you know, experienced way to um, recover the platform of the components that are failing uh, or not in a bad, not in a good state uh, to recover them uh, from bad to good state. So that's our goal. That's um, those are the things that are coming in future. Um, just to give a quick example of what we are testing and how we are testing. So this is an example of auto scaler smoke test. Um, very basic workflow. Um, you know, start with logging into a plat uh, to into a foundation. Um, target a specific organ space. Uh, first, we check the auto scaler apps that are provided by the platform are up and running. And then we basically download the plugin and um, go through a complete life cycle of uh, how an app uh, would be using the autoscaler service. So right from creating the service instance, pushing a sample app, um, you know, binding the service instance, um, scaling the app, uh, writing some or creating some autoscaling tools um, based on their HTTP latency and memory and cpu requirements and so on and then we generate some fake traffic to the app and uh, see the auto scaling events are taking place as expected and at the end we do all the necessary cleanup and um, once everything is okay we report all the um, metrics for each and an individual uh, step here um, to our metrics platform which is Plunk. So obviously things can go wrong in any of these steps. So we want to make sure that we are not wasting time uh, executing any further uh, operations. If uh, you know the operation that failed is basically a blocking operation. So for example, if the create service fails, uh, there's no point to do anything else uh, beyond that point because uh, obviously if you can't create an auto scaler service, then you can't really bind an app and um, use the service as expected. So we, we capture the results of every single step here and um, build heuristics at the Splunk side. <clears throat> uh, same uh, example for Spring Cloud services. Uh, we basically test all three major um, service types, um, meaning a config server, service registry, and circuit breaker. And obviously, they require the app that we are using requires MySQL as well. So we create a MySQL instance as well, and then uh, check the entire workflow um, right from creating the services to binding the services to a sample app, um, and then um, making sure that the app is able to read and write from those services instances. So that's our entire workflow. Any questions so far? Okay, cool. Um, again, the, the workflow right here is run the smoke test uh, and ship the metrics because if, if we don't um, store the metrics or the result, we can't build heuristics, we can't uh, be sure that what's the pattern uh, of those failures so that we can take more predictive actions and uh, actions to avoid those kind of situations that are causing um, those failures. Um, just a sample dashboard and you know, the alerts that we get from um, Splunk. So in Splunk, what we are showing here is that you know, all, these are the foundations and uh, these are the sources, which is basically the name of the smoke test job itself. Um, that is failing on this particular foundation. And here is a concourse URL that you can follow to uh, actually go to concourse and look at the logs and figure out what's, what actually went wrong and so on. Um, this is a very high level um, dashboard, which is just telling you that this job failed, um, but we, we do have the metrics to um, say that uh, on this foundation, um, Spring Cloud services failed because 
it, it failed to create a MySQL instance or it failed to create a config server instance. Uh, so we have the uh, metrics available at that kind of our level and we can uh, obviously look look back in the past and analyze how many times a particular operation has been failing on a particular foundation or a given region or foundations and such. So that really helps us um, identifying and analyzing those problems that are causing these failures. Um, just a high level overview of our deployment strategy. So we have a bootstrap pipeline, which basically monitors a GitHub repo uh, that contains the pipelines, the environment variables, and the smoke test scripts. Uh, it goes ahead, uh, checks the Git repo, and any changes occur on the Git repo, it re deploys the pipeline on every region specific concourse. And within every region specific concourse, we have teams dedicated to um, all the foundations within that particular region. So uh, the bootstrap pipeline on any change will take the code and deploy the pipeline on the smoke test pipeline of each foundations uh, within their individual team. And what that pipeline contains, it contains all the jobs for all these um, components or services. Um, we use Vault as our uh, secret store, and um, it's basically designed based on the concourse deployment strategy. So every uh, region specific concourse has um, dedicated path in the world that we use and so on. So um, with this, uh, I'm like to move on to just a screenshot. Um, this is just a real picture of um, what we saw in this uh, smoke test pipeline. We have all these smoke test jobs um, for a given foundation that um, we use. So that's how we are basically testing our foundations as of now. Uh, how have they really helped us? Um, we do foundation upgrades really every three to six months uh, timeframes and given the number of foundations, um, we it requires a significant cycle of say eight to 10 weeks. Um, that's very critical time when we want to be on top of things um, as far as the workflows and the health of the platform is concerned. So we, we use the smoke test regularly while we're doing all the upgrades. The retail season is very important for us, typically from September to December uh, timeframe when the new, phone uh, new phones get launched and so on. Um, and you know, there's Thanksgiving, Christmas, holiday seasons uh, where the sales are typically higher and um, the applications that are um, catering to the stores and you know, uh, deployed on all our, all our platforms. Um, we want to make sure that those applications um, should be able to use the platform services uh, as expected. And we want to make sure that we are using the smoke test to verify and ensure that. Uh, new phone launch is it. So that uh, daily basis, of course, we run these pipelines on a regular interval um, and every job has a customized frequency. So on a daily basis, we want to make sure that we're um, running this to ensure the good health of the platforms. Um, really, most of the uh, smoke test jobs have um, helped us on different occasions, but typically uh, auto scaler, spring cloud services, and um, this one dedicated to see the logging workflow. Uh, those are some of the more critical ones that have um, benefited us more frequently than the others. And um, the reasons are obvious. You know, all our applications are, um, or I would say most of our applications are auto scaled. Um, we provide these recommendations to our application developers on a regular basis to follow the good practices, um, have you know, any FR replication, uh, having auto scaler, um, binding to syslog services so that your logs are available uh, in Splunk and so on. So the smoke tests that actually monitor these workflows are super critical for us. We 
uh, use them way more frequently than the others. And overall, I would say every single smoke test has um, helped us in one way or the other at one point or the other. Uh, really, the goal is to know the problems before it really impacts the customers. And uh, I think uh, in our experience, um, the smoke tests have really helped us uh, achieving that goal. Uh, that's all from me. Uh, any questions, I'm more than happy to take. I have two questions, if I may. Um, one, you mentioned the autoscaler. Uh, are you talking about the, the, because you're running PASS, right? The Pivotal platform, you're using the Pivotal autoscaler or the community one? Because I believe there was two different ones. Um, we're using Pivotal one. Ah, okay. Because we also had some, some issues, uh, well, let's say challenges with the Pivotal autoscaler. That's why we also included it in, in our smoke test. And you, you, you do have a history there. I mean, that's cool. That's exactly the thing we are missing. Is that because you, you extract that data from Splunk or is that not where the metrics go? Yes, so um, the, coming back to this. Uh, oh yeah, you had the dashboard there. Oh yeah. So um, what we do is we basically oh, yeah. emit our metrics from the smoke test, which is running in concourse uh, to oh, a yeah. layer called Telegraph. Telegraph is basically an open source um, uh, sort of data formatter. So you can translate whatever uh -huh. uh, data format to any given uh, output format. So we take JSON and convert it to Splunk metrics format uh, using Telegraph and ship those metrics to Splunk. Okay, cool. Because we are outputting JSON, so we can use Telegraph as well. Thanks for the tip. <laughs> we do have integration with Splunk already, so that would complete yeah. our picture. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Are there any other questions? I know we're heading up towards time. Thank you very much. That was super interesting, actually. So there was a great suggestion from Wayne in the chat that maybe between those two projects and, and Wayne's effort, there's a, a kind of an extensions project in the making. That'd be great to see. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's see. We've got eight minutes left. I think Sai was scheduled to give us a, an update I on CF for KS. Um, yeah, we just uh, we were chatting offline. I'm very okay. sorry, everyone. This is Troy, and I'm very sorry to have missed the first part of this. I will, of course, watch the uh, uh, the recordings. Thank you, thank you very much, Neil, for for covering for me. Um, I, I just chatted with Sai, and we've agreed to postpone that item for next week. Sai, is that? Uh, I think that's what we just agreed. So yeah. So we'll That'd be great if next week count. when we've got a bit more time. Uh, the kubectf incubation proposal on the agenda. Uh, I think Vlad is still sick, unfortunately. Get well soon, Vlad. Um, that was just to point it out on the uh, CF dev list. If you have any comments about the document where he proposes, where we propose um, incubating kubectf, have a little look at that uh, uh, that thread and uh, please feel free to make comments in, in the document that's linked. And then that's going to uh, be circulated amongst the, the PMC. So I If they want to have any discussions around that, is there a Slack channel, Troy? Uh, that could be on the cf for k 8 channel. We uh, talked about in the Kubernetes SIG yesterday how the cf for k 8 channel is sort of an overloaded channel name because it's also the name of, of size repo. Uh, but I, I think we're all there. Uh, or maybe better yet, uh, there is a there's a kubectf dev channel. Let me just drop that here. Thank you. Black channel here oh. is kubectf dev. We'd be happy to, to talk to people if you want to talk to us about the project. <coughs> I'm on that channel sometimes. So. Uh, may I ask one uh, question about the KubeCF uh, project? Certainly. Um, because, yeah, um, I did, uh, I think the last CAP call was also about the incubation of, of KubeCF, or was that another call? I attended one call where it was also mentioned. What, 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 we were interest, what we are interested in right now, since we already run Kubernetes and we run Cloud Foundry, 
I don't know. Is there any 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 uh, reference or guideline on how an operator can move towards uh, yeah cloud founder on Kubernetes? Because that seems to be where everybody is going or is planning to going. And there seem to be multiple ways of doing that now. So, yeah, there there are in fact, and this came up. Uh, I want to invite people to who are interested in this topic to join the uh, SIG, the Kubernetes. SIG meeting, which happens on the, the third Tuesday of every month. So the next one will be on the 17th of March at 8.30 a.m. Pacific. I can't remember what that is in Central, Central European. Um, there are two initiatives going on right now. And uh, there's a bit of, we, we talked about this yesterday. There's a bit of a confusing landscape for the uninitiated, uh, the uninitiated to, to, to join in. So uh, we got a little committee from that SIG that's going to get together and, and untangle it and point people to the right places. The short answer is um, uh, KubeCF uh, is going to be the sort of working Cloud Foundry currently based on Bosch, uh, working with the CF operator. And the uh, CF for K8s is the integration point. Feel free to chime in, Sai, I don't want to speak for you, uh, for the new upstream Kubernetesification of the core components. And kubectf will, will of course try and integrate those as well. Uh, but so there are two projects going on uh, right now. Uh, kubectf is one of them, but uh, at the moment it's not under the CFF umbrella. We're trying to get that in so that it- yes. Congratulations on the incubation part. I saw there was some announcement earlier, so. But it's, it's not there yet. I don't want to speak. I You're don't want to working speak. on it. You're we're, making progress. We're, to, we're hoping to, to be able to announce the incubation soonish. Um, okay. Once it's had some review and then, and then we'll see how it progresses. But um, cool. Thank uh, you. But yeah, we, uh, please, please join the conversation uh, in the Kubernetes SIG if you're interested. And uh, there's that channel as well on Slack, CF for, for K8s. Uh, CF. Where we talk about uh, both projects and in general, uh, the direction. Cool. Thank you very much for the feedback. And, and Ono, oh sorry, I, I missed your presentation. I will go back and watch the recording. <laughs> I hope you, the recreation look, I, I hope it looked okay because it's hard for me to see if, if, if there was some sound breaking up at, at the beginning. So I hope it, I was understandable or it was understandable, but yeah. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley, for recording. Thank you again, Neil, very much. Uh, uh, for presenting and for covering for me. Uh, Max sends his regrets. He is unfortunately unable to attend. Um, uh, and uh, look forward to the next one. Swarna, any closing remarks? No, thank you very much, Neil, for stepping up and uh, hosting it today. And thank you very much, Anna and uh, Piyush, for your presentation. That's really super helpful. I am. Um, I'm looking at the chat as well. Thank you uh, for mentioning that you all at T-Mobile are also working on um, open sourcing your suite, the smoke test suite, working with the legal team. I will probably be sending out an email to the team of folks and also Anno to see if uh, we can follow up on the conversation, like continue the conversation that Wayne had proposed for to merge all these efforts and make this maybe a really effective uh, extensions project. So stay tuned for that. That would be great because again, in the end, we all face the similar or same problems, so. Oh no, welcome to the community. <laughs> One question, is there, <laughs> or actually I already asked several, <laughs> that <laughs> does, any, does anybody have any experience of the cloud controller losing its data? <laughs> Well, we're gonna or this is the wrong place Slack. to ask. <laughs> <laughs> That's a broad question. <laughs> no, Which... I, I, just recently we lost our uh, MySQL database. Well, Ouch. actually, the database was there, Ouch. but the cloud controller lost the service instance information. So we were like, how do we get our data back? Well, hey, uh, uh, no. uh, uh, Swarna can introduce us and after this call, we're happy to take a, take a peek with you. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. We already got a workaround. We logged into all containers and got the environment variables because they were still running, but thank you. <laughs> sure, but it'd be good to help you prevent that in the future, so we should chat. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. Sorry. As you can see, no question is um, out of limits for our community call. <laughs> Definitely not. Neil, right. any closing remarks? None, apart from welcome, Troy. Um, <laughs> I'm looking forward to an introduction from you next time. I'll do a proper a start. <laughs> Sorry for my immovable conflict today. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll properly introduce myself uh, next week, but we are at the top of the hour. So if uh, anyone has anything urgent, speak now. Otherwise, we'll see you all on Slack and in the next meeting. Bye-bye. See you. Thank you. See you. Thank you. Bye.